Good afternoon and welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of St. James. Today is the memorial of St. Barnabas Apostle. Please join us in singing our opening hymn, number 887, By All Your Saints Still Striving, number 887. We will be singing the St. Barnabas verse. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Good afternoon. Today as we celebrate this great apostle of the early church, St. Barnabas, and we think about his generosity, sharing his talent, his time, and even his treasure, having fallen so deeply in love with God, having the revelation of the gospel given to him and wanting, like St. Paul, to go everywhere that all people, Jews, non-Jews, whoever, might come to know salvation in Jesus' holy name. And so perhaps we can do the same, emulate his example, falling in love so deeply with God that we will do everything to share God with others. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came in word and sacrament to strengthen us in the holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who decreed that St. Barnabas, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, should be set apart to convert the nation, Grant that the gospel of Christ, which he strenuously preached, may be faithfully proclaimed by word and by deed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
<clears throat> a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart, for he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people was added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year, they met with the church and taught a large number of people, and it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, and Manian, who was a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, completing their fasting and prayer, they laid hands on them and sent them off. The word of the Lord. has won victory for him. His holy arm, the Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. In the sight of the nations he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord all you lands. Break into song, sing a praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power.
Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Barnabas, a co-worker with St. Paul. And like Paul, although he was not part of the original 12 that Jesus had initially chosen, he is referred to as an apostle, someone sent out. We could point out that not much is known about Barnabas. He was Jewish from the island of Cyprus, became a disciple of Jesus, sold his property in Jerusalem and gave the money to the church, and he associated with Paul and John Mark. That's about it. It's not certain how, when, or where he died. And in ancient times, Barnabas was thought by some to be the author of the letter to the Hebrews. And there are also two Gospels of Barnabas that have been attributed to him, as well as an epistle of Barnabas. You notice that I said attributed to him, right? Nobody knows if he really wrote these things or not, and most people don't think that he did. Even though almost no one believes he wrote any of the works attributed to him, it does demonstrate his authority and popularity as an apostle and preacher because he was somebody. During a persecution, some Cypriots, remember he was from Cyprus, some Cypriots and Cyrenians left Jerusalem and when they got into Antioch, they started preaching to non-Jews. And that probably doesn't seem like a big deal, right? But in the past, they always went to the synagogue first. They preached to Jewish people. Then they may have preached to some, what they called God-fearers. They were non-Jews, but they went to synagogues. And so they knew a lot about Jewish practice and lived many times like Jews, but they weren't completely converted. But now they're just going to all out non-Jews. And so, when the church in Jerusalem heard that they were having great success with this, they sent Barnabas to investigate. And what he saw pleased him, and he exhorted those converts to remain faithful. But there was so much work to be done that this Barnabas went to Tarsus to fetch his colleague Saul to help him. And you should know that Saul was not exactly... Um, being loved at this point, okay? 
Remember, he was involved in a big persecution and all that, and people were like, he became a Christian. I don't think so. <laughs> you know? And so they were suspicious of him. But um, Paul started to use his, well, his name Saul, he started to use his Roman name Paul, and Barnabas is the one that started to get people to understand that he really did convert. And so he and Barnabas had great success in Antioch and in other places. Um, for a whole year they taught there. They, it really, it was like a really big deal. So the two of them went to Jerusalem with an offering for the poor, and Barnabas was with Paul, and Barnabas' cousin, also John Mark, on Paul's first missionary journey. They went back up to Jerusalem for the council to settle the matter of whether non-Jews had to become Jews before they could become Christians, because this was a bone of contention with a lot of people. Look, we're Jews, Jesus is a Jew, his mother is a Jew, his father is a Jew, we're all Jewish, you know, and now these people want to become part of this Christian thing, which is a Jewish thing. Doesn't it make sense that they have to become Jews like we are too first? And then they have to obey the Mosaic law. Well, you know, I don't want to get too into it, but there is a certain aspect of becoming Jewish that pertains to men that a lot of these converts weren't too excited about. Let's just put it that way. And so it was a real debate. Do they have to follow the Mosaic law or not? So the council decided that there were some things that they had to follow, but for the most part, Christians did not have to become Jews first. And so Barnabas and Paul were commissioned to preach to the non-Jews, to the Gentiles. So, Paul got this great idea to go on another missionary journey. And so he wanted to take Barnabas along with him, but Barnabas also wanted to take his cousin John Mark with him, and Paul wasn't having it. Because on another occasion, John Mark had left and went someplace else, and I guess Paul didn't get over that. He was like, oh, no, 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 no. So what ended up happening, I put it like this, so forgive me. Um, I guess that's when Paul came out with his first solo album, you know, because, you know, the other two, John Mark and Barnabas, left and went to Cyprus, and then now Paul is on his own, right? So he got other people to go along with him, and, well, the little trio broke up, but they still remained friends afterwards. At the end of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus tells his disciples to go and make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach what Jesus commanded. This is, what, this is called the Great Commission. Jesus said, go out and baptize and teach people to obey my teaching. Despite all kinds of challenges, this is exactly what Barnabas did. He was that salt of the earth. He was that city set on a mountain. He was that lit lamp on a lampstand. These apostles were men who gave up everything to bring people to Christ. There was the care of the poor, of course. There were the miracles of healing, of course. There were moments to clarify what is a true belief, what is a not true belief, of course. But the main goal, the main goal was to bring people to conversion and inner transformation through Jesus leading to eternal life. Barnabas, whose name, his given name was Joseph, but they called him Barnabas because he had this great charism in preaching. He went out and did exactly what Jesus said. And in the Acts of the Apostles, they tell us that the name Barnabas, which is Aramaic, what it means in Greek is 
paraklesios, and I'm sure you all understand that perfectly, right? Who used paraklesios? Son of encouragement. But in fact, you do know what this word means because paraklesios is the same word as paraclete. And paraclete, as you know, is the Holy Spirit, the great comforter. Now, what could be more comforting than knowing how much God loves you? What could be more comforting to know that there is an agent, an agency, the Holy Spirit of God to bring us not only in communion with God, but in communion with each other and to reveal to us the great mystery, the great secret of our salvation. And Barnabas brought that about as the paraclesios, the great comforter. So go, make disciples, baptize, teach. The situation of the church will look a whole lot better if all of, the, if all of us we're doing exactly that. Go, make disciples, baptize, teach. So, when are you going to start? Let us stand to pray. Knowing that the Father hears the prayers of his children, we bring him our petitions. For bishops and priests, and in particular we pay, pray for Pope Francis and for Bishop Brennan, may God grant them a spirit of faithfulness and fortitude in their ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who hold civil, civic office, may the guidance of the Holy Spirit help them enact laws and practices that promote the welfare and dignity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For those searching for meaning or direction in their lives, may God open their hearts to his grace. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us here at this liturgy, both physically and virtually, may the graces of the Eucharist bring deeper unity and consolation to all our needs. Let us pray to the Lord. For the special intentions of Fuk Ching Yong and Ad Ying Lim, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. And for all who have died and Today, let us pray for our ancestors, deceased benefactors, and deceased friends, and also for the ancestors, deceased benefactors, and deceased friends here buried at St. James. May, the, may they join the angels and saints in heaven in singing God's praises for all eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Merciful Father, we offer these prayers, trusting that you know what we need. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the words of the sacrifice and your hands praise the Lord. Sanctify with your blessing, we pray, O Lord, the offerings presented here so that by your grace they may set us on fire with the flame of your love, by which St. Barnabas brought the light of the gospel to the nations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you in need of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Set up. 
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who are pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. confidence in the Father, let us now pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity and accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Life-Giving Bread Saving Cup, number 920. <laughs> Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of eternal life, we humbly implore you, Lord, that what we celebrate in sacramental signs on the memorial of the blessed apostle Barnabas, we may one day behold unveiled through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God, and have a most blessed day.
Bring forth the kingdom, number 772. city of God. 